cast dressers is enough. This is an emergency broadcast, so please, by all means, stay and watch this video. Um, I would appreciate if you obviously go across the Blake's channel and share his video as much as you can. Uh, share this video as much as you can. We're going to try and get it viral for, <laughs> for in the reselling space at least. So long story short, Depop has banned Blake's account. Uh, for very unwarranted reasons. I know Blake personally. Um, he was a very good friend, and he's also been on the podcast for a very long time with Grumpy Grady and I. So by all means, can you please, if you only do one thing today, and by all means, I don't care about what you think about me or otherwise, just put that aside for the time being, please email Depop at support at depop.com and basically ask a human uh, to, you know, basically... Um, have a look at Blake's account, which is at Aussie Quality Goods. Uh, so if you could do that for me, that'd be perfect. And what we'll do now is we'll actually go in and react to his video that he's just punched out 10 minutes ago. Oop, where's the camera? There we go, there we go. I got banned on Depop, and there is no hope of getting my account back. Is I call that bullshit. So basically, let's do what we can to get it out there, because realistically, um, I'm pretty sure that you've been following Blake on the socials. He's a lot more amical, <laughs> more lovable than the octopus. So basically, Blake is just recently bought a house. He's working full-time reseller. So realistically, in Australia, that was eBay and Depop. Uh, from previous conversations with Blake, and I do apologize in advance, Blake, if I'm overstepping, uh, Depop has been providing a majority of his sales. So having potentially 60%, 70% of his sales cut off uh, from a platform because of no fault of his own. Um, and what I've said before is Blake is the most pathetic human alive when it comes to following rules. So realistically, what they're accusing him of, I can wholeheartedly say um, that I do not believe it in the slightest. So by all means, you know, take my word for it. Um, by all means, you won't be doing um, yourself a disservice by reaching out to Depop. So please, 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 uh, let's try and get Blake's uh, channel, uh, his selling platform back. This video might be a little bit rambly. It's not going to be very polished <clears throat> and all that kind of thing. But I just needed to talk to you guys and tell you exactly what happened to me. So it hopefully doesn't happen to you. Over the last sort of two or three months, Depop was quickly becoming my main platform. I was still selling on eBay, but I was actually making more on Depop due to the kind of things that I was selling. Now, I've been a massive advocate for Depop. I literally... So that's the complete opposite to me. I'm lucky to sell one or two things a, a fortnight on Depop. Um, but I suppose from what my stance is and the, the purpose of this video is Blake's been quite vocal about Depop. He, he does how-to videos. He does cross-listing videos and all these different things. And all he's receiving from that is cross um ad revenue. So he's not sponsored in any capacity. He's not sponsored by Depop. He's not sponsored by Crossless Magic. However, you know, he's been putting himself out there showing the general community and the wider reselling community how to list on Depop Australia. Um, so it'd be quite appreciative. Like I said, I'm going to be sound like a broken record, no different than normal, is to basically please reach out to them and ask a human uh, to reassess his account and hopefully reinstatement. Uh, I'm going to do that on my account. And like I said, that I'm pretty sure that I'm going to push out to Blake as well. But by all means, please, please, please uh, do that for us. I had a video just last week teaching you how to cross list from eBay to Depop, but I can't even do that myself now. And I kind of just wanted to make this video just to at least give a little bit of awareness that these platforms, they can literally just rip your whole account from you with no warning whatsoever. And and that's what we've been saying for a very long time. Yeah, you know, obviously the last reaction video that did with below standard. This is what happens with below standard people, right? This is the exact, I suppose, case study for a lack of a better term. That, you know, like if you do fall below study, uh, below standard for, for eBay, you know, you won't have a Depop account, you won't have an eBay account. So realistically, any grand designs of going full-time reselling uh, is sh is shot. And I like I'm saying is that Blake, hopefully he's well in where he is at the moment. I'm more worried about his headspace. Uh, but by all means, please, please, please be very mindful of your accounts. Uh, even, like I said, that in you, you'll probably come evident in Blake's video. I haven't watched this video. I normally... Uh, watch the reaction videos beforehand <laughs> just to get a bit of a, an idea of what's going on and just a sense of things that shouldn't necessarily be there. Um, so I'm actually watching it as we go through today. You're done. I actually thought that Depop was better than eBay in terms of seller protection, in terms of just being a seller in general, but I completely go back on everything that I said. Now, I don't want to make the video too long, but basically what did happen is my account got flagged by their little robot uh, for apparently selling a fake counterfeit item. Now I can promise you I would not sell a fake item and this definitely wasn't fake. It was a $10 Adidas jumper. 
Yeah, and like I was saying, is that Blake's by the rule book, yeah, and you, and you have to be when you're a full time reseller, right? Like you know, I'm not perfect in reselling, and nor do I make out that I am. Um, however, like I said, that Blake is probably <laughs> the, the straightest uh, person comes to when it comes to reselling from that perspective. Numbers all matched up directly back to the Adidas website. Had the little QR code. Had all the authentic tags, stitching. Everything was completely authentic. But their robot said that it was counterfeit. Now I have had items flagged for this before but i've had them overturned before just because you know their robot was new or whatever the hell was going on but this one i couldn't get overturned and therefore they suspended my account now i thought it was just going to be a run-of-the-mill thing i put in my appeal all sorts of things and they requested that i show them the original purchase receipt i straight up said to them i said look i bought it second hand from someone else i do not have the original purchase receipt i got it through my wholesaler which does do different checks, authenticity checks, quality checks, all that <coughs> kind of things. I'm relatively good at being able to tell when things are fake or not fake, but that didn't matter to Depop. They completely banned me and took down the listing, took down my entire account. I got orders that are waiting to get sent out that I cannot send out because I don't have access to my account. And they completely banned me for listing an authentic item. It is yeah, so basically Blake refers to a wholesaler. And I know a lot of people that use wholesaler lots and um, I'm not going to name them, but obviously if you watch their YouTube channel, you can do all these different things. Realistically, like I was saying, uh, the three people that I know that deal heavily in wholesale, they know their stuff back to front when it comes to authenticity and all these different things. Blake has reached out to me previously months ago uh, for a second opinion. Uh, I wasn't too sure, and he, he just binned the item because he wasn't 100% sure on, on the authenticity of this item. So like I'm saying is that from for for depop to you know for, to ban people willy-nilly <laughs> it's um it's quite a sad state of affairs for all those different things and I, I suppose from a selfish reason from a perspective as well is that you know if, if they're doing this to blake that's obviously following the rules doing all these different things doing these internal checks what's the stopping from happening to you um what we can do is basically try and make a movement of sorts like i said i'm not expecting thousands and thousands of people to watch this video um however is we can get as many people we can to obviously email and request Rein, reinstatement of Blake's account that sets precedence for, for future you know events that happen along the lines of this. Been on Depop for about two or three months, hence why it's down to that ten dollar mark there. But there was nothing that they could do. I went through about three different people, and then in the end, they reviewed my appeal. And as I couldn't provide the original purchase receipt for that individual item, a pre-owned item, that they have to permanently ban my account and all. I just want to put press pause there for a second, and I apologize <laughs> if you want to watch the full video uninterrupted. Uh, like I said, slide over to Blake's channel. But Depop is, from my perspective, and you know, I suppose 99% of the perspective, is actually a secondhand reselling website. So, you know, a lot of their fashion is recycled, you know, from the 70s and obviously vintage and all these different things. So theoretically, yeah, if you're selling a Levi's pair of jeans from the 70s, are you expected to have the original receipt for that? in that circumstance I, I i call bullshit like i don't swear a lot on this channel and, <laughs> and i apologize to those that are easily offended and turned off but that but nothing infuriates me more um when you know these kind of companies just take it into their own stride and basically you know won't overturn a, a robot and all these different things and and to you know to request an original purchase receipt um it's just ludicrous yeah i can understand if they're you know, a website that just delves in, you know, high level Louis Vuitton, you know, stuff along to that. But when a majority of their stuff is thrifted um, and people are actually modeling this stuff, wearing it, which <laughs> I don't know how that goes from, you know, a hygiene or a cleanliness thing. I don't care. Like, that's not, not the stance when I'm, I'm standing. But like I said, th there are some people that slip through the cracks in that respect. So by all means, let's not accept this from, from Depop. I expected better from Depop. And like I said, Blake before is... He's kind of an unofficial champion for, <laughs> for Depop in the reselling space. So I know a lot of people in Grumpy Greenies uh, Discord, and even when um, he's been on the podcast before, as we had a lot of Depop questions that people would ask in the questions and and reach out to Blake, you know, personally, and you know, he would be happily to answer them and all those different things. So this is probably our turn to uh, give back to to Blake somewhat and just. An email with the username and just say, please uh, request the human reinstate his account or review his account and all these different things. No, like I said, two two sec sentence email. Um, hopefully we get enough people to send it through to Depop. We can get Blake's account reinstated. Future accounts that I make that any of my family makes. Lisa, my partner, tried to make an account. She got banned like that. And they said that they refused to talk to me anymore as their decision is final and going... 
So what happened behind that is that when you get a ban from these uh, from these sites, they use any uh, identifying data. So they might use your IP address, which is linked to your computer. So um, I'm not too sure. <laughs> I haven't really studied computers in a couple of years, but you've got dynamic and static IP addresses. So they, they use that data to see where your computer is coming from and it obviously identifies from that system. If you have to use your driver's license or your social security number to, to sign up to Depop, that's another identity, identifying feature. But obviously he's a partner, uh, Lisa, you know, which I've spoken to numerous times and she's a lovely person by herself. Um, you know, she's obviously come through on the same IP address or something along that is triggered in the system and instant banned. Uh, so like I said, that it's, it's just ludicrous, um, the, the lack of customer service. And, you know, and if, if it's happened to Blake, it could literally happen to any other reseller out there. Back and forward would be completely unnecessary. Now, honestly, I find it absolutely deplorable, their customer service in the way that they handled this situation. I showed them absolutely everything that I possibly could. They requested photos of stitching, logos, tags, everything all of which were authentic and I completely sent them over, showed them and I was confident that things would get done. <coughs> but because I didn't have that original purchase receipt for that one cheap little jumper that I bought second hand, they shut down my entire account. All the money in fees that I was paying to them is gone, so they don't get that either. But that's also on average about 2,000, maybe two and a half thousand lately a week that I don't get anymore. Now I'll be okay, I've got eBay, but I've also got about 200 items of stock, which I bought specifically for Depop, which won't sell as well on eBay that I now have to try and offer. No, we're not going to do that. We're basically going to get your account back, mate. <laughs> so please, 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 please help. I'm going to have to change up my sourcing strategy. I'm going to have to change up the stuff that I buy through wholesale. I usually try and buy things that will sell well on both platforms. But most of the time, the things that I buy actually sell better over on Depop. And now that's not going to be a thing because they just kicked me off for no reason at all. Now, I don't want to have a whinge. I am having a whinge. I'm sorry for that but I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a rundown of what happened to me so it doesn't happen to you. Yesterday was a day I crossed just over a thousand orders over on Depop, moving close to over 1500 items in the last six months or so. I was getting emails saying I'm basically about to become one of their top sellers. There was chats about being one of their Depop ambassadors, all that kind of thing like that. And just like that, because their robot flagged it, I get completely kicked off and I've tried to communicate with them. So I don't, <laughs> mean to you know draw any unnecessary attention but when you actually engage with these customer service representatives they're normally from countries that i suppose english isn't necessarily their first language <laughs> so by all means take it you know take it read between the lines as much as you can with that um and they're, they're following a script so by all means please be pleasant with these people if you are emailing them just politely ask to you know for even you know in my email it will be basically asked to be escalated to a manager or to a supervisor for a, a second opinion uh because realistically the people we're dealing with on blake's been dealing with are you know very low level support staff and probably don't get paid a lot which is you know a, a crime and injustice by itself however that's the nature of the beast right so I'm going to be asking to be escalated to a supervisor. Um, I'll be asking to get a phone call and obviously a follow-up from that perspective. So like I said, as much pressure we can put on this company to reinstate Blake's account. I wouldn't be doing this if I had an inkling or, or anything, uh, if Blake was, you know, untowards or otherwise. But like I'm saying is that this not only affects Blake in his bottom line for his business, uh, it also affects his partner, also affects his finances, also affects his house and all these different things he's recently purchased, but it also affects the wider reselling community. If we don't make a stand now, uh, this basically could happen uh, more and more occasions. Again, I've tried all sorts of stuff, but I don't know if I've blacklisted my emails, anything. I've tried from different email accounts. They will not reply to a single thing that I say to them, which is just absolutely ridiculous. I asked for an explanation on exactly what it was that was fake about it, but they told me it was unnecessary and uh, they are unable to provide that information for me and they will not be talking to me again. And what I don't understand about the whole thing with the receipt is that they allow sellers to sell rework items and rework items are quite <coughs> literally just bits and pieces of clothing from all different brands, all different styles and stuff stitched together and they put a tag in. That's that's basically it. And that's not an original item. That could be classed as a bootleg or a fake, but that's fine in the eyes of Depop. That yeah, and I've sold numerous things like that before myself. It was actually R.M. Williams where people have actually done art on the legs, which is obviously... 
I don't know where that fits in the scheme because, you know, obviously being an octopus, I don't wear clothes. <laughs> so, but yeah, like I said, that is no longer a legitimate RM Williams piece because it's not authorized by them. So realistically, there's so many pitfalls from here. I know the Commonwealth Picker had problems with eBay last year, and I would implore my American and UK friends and all those people over the world that do watch us, um, please, please, please just email support at depop like i was saying before we're going to sound like a broken record but i can't stress this enough like yeah like i said i know kevin had a lot of um support behind him uh so i would like to get as much support behind blake as i can don't seem to care about that kind of thing which i really don't really understand now they're meant to be an amazing uh promotion of pre-owned clothing they're meant to promote the whole second hand make things circular is their whole thing you're looking at the account it says keep it circular and all that sort of stuff so to make you need that original receipt and to flag you for having an actual authentic item and not even be willing to let you prove it that it is authentic and when you do it doesn't go to an authenticator or anything like that it goes to a customer service rep who's got absolutely so just, uh, I, like I said, I haven't watched this video before, but I mean, so I'm going to jump in here before I lose my uh, train of thought. So when I've actually bought off Depop before, I actually bought a, a PlayStation 4 game, which I haven't received yet. So <laughs> I need to follow that up myself. But what it is, is when you actually receive the item, uh, I've bought, you know, Dixon shirts and all these different things off Depop before, is that there's actually a button saying repop it. So basically that means that you can re reuse that listing and put it back on Depop from your perspective. If I'm buying it secondhand, and what Blake just said then, is how would I be able to provide an original receipt to say it is an authentic Dixon flannel shirt if I purchased it through Depop? So that, that's another valid thing that we need to take into consideration. So absolutely no idea about anything in terms of authentication. It just doesn't make any sense. But unfortunately, these companies have the power to enforce whatever rules they want to, regardless of how inconsistent they are. Now I'm lucky. I've got an amazing partner. I just got, literally yesterday morning, I got a part-time job. They called me back and I got hired, which is great. But less than six hours later, after getting hired for a new job, I got kicked off of Depop. And I was really gonna be able to get ahead with that amount. But now that job is pretty much going to cover the loss that I had on Depop, which is really quite demoralizing. I was wondering so a little bit of background story behind um, Grumpy Granny, Blake and I, when we were doing the podcast is that, Leon and I pushed a lot onto Blake in respect to probably looking for a, for an alternative source of income or like an employment position. Uh, when I went back to work, probably at the start of the year, we we kind of, I won't say pressured Blake, but we did put a lot of um, <laughs> pressure on him to, you know, I suppose, seek some sort of employment. Um, I know he was looking at that stage and I wasn't sure that he got a part-time job. This is news to me as well. Um, but what it really comes down to is this is something that, like I was saying before, with a full time romanticizing it, but full time is that realistically you could be doing you know five thousand, ten thousand dollars on a week on a platform. All of a sudden you get banned, you get suspended, all these different things. There goes your income. Um, in not having that fail safe of a job, it's realistically you're screwed. Yeah, you know? and by the time that recruiting comes through, so I would strongly suggest um, anyone looking at going full time at least have six months or twelve months of savings that you can fall back on. That's not to use when you're reselling. This is actually in your account as you're reselling, just for these fail safes. So, yeah, if you do lose your account, you lose your eBay account because you fall below standard. You lose your Depop account because they're incompetent. Um, you've got something to fall back on to you till you get another job. So, by please make sure that you're financially viable uh, before you even look. At going reselling full-time i know a lot of people romanticize about it i know a lot of youtube channels and they send me batshit crazy i can't stress enough like there's these people that are, have got tens of thousands of followers on youtube that are basically telling you how much roses and sunshine full-time reselling is it's not i can tell you right now it's a lot more complicated i live in canberra which is one of the capital cities in australia you know infinite supply of yeah, you know, secondhand goods, pre and stuff here. And I still couldn't make it full-time reselling. So be very mindful is that if you live in the middle of nowhere, it's going to be very complicated. Um, I look at it, things from a bell curve perspective, and I reckon, yeah, conservatively, you know, 99.7% of people will fail reselling full-time. Um, yeah, and like I said, that a lot of people that you don't speak to, they just disappear. Um, I have said on numerous videos before that when I came on the scene as the octopus about three years ago, um, probably about maybe two or three percent of those people that I spoke to two or three years ago are still reselling. Um, so I don't think I'm too far off in the numbers. <laughs> like I said, it is, it's a lot harder. 
um, and it's a lot more complicated than you are. I'm not talking down to you. I'm not being condescending. It's just realistic. Um, con you know, ingest every bit of YouTube content for entertainment purposes. I don't care what the channel says they are or if they're making hundreds of millions of dollars on you know, selling secondhand clothes in Florida. I do not care to the slightest. What it comes down to is basically make sure that you have the financial means to carry on. I want you guys to be aware that it is a very real possibility when you are on Depop that you might get flagged and you may get kicked off for the exact same reason and not get a chance to redeem yourself. If you buy your stuff at a op shop or a thrift shop or a market or the Goodwill bins if you're in America, anything like that, you're not going to be able to show the original purchase receipt because it's a secondhand thing and that's not going to be good enough for them. Now, I'd understand if I got a hell of a lot of the exact same jumper and I got a bulk load of a thousand pieces of that exact same jumper, then they'd maybe want to see that receipt. But for one pre-owned item that has been on their platform for about three months, I don't understand it at all. And I just want you guys to be careful that this exact same thing could happen to you. And it's really something to think about, not just with Depop, but other platforms as well, of just the power that they hold over you. Even with eBay, if something the customer believes is inauthentic, they can flag that and return it, and you'll get a little ding and you'll have to <coughs> refund it, but they're not gonna probably kick you off the platform, not straight away like that. There was no customer complaints, there was no customer reports, nothing like that. It was just because their AI robot the only complaint that should be is about his haircut, but <laughs> probably his facial hair, but that's not, that's not the purpose of the video. Keep occupied. Decided that that item was inauthentic for God knows what reason. I just really want you guys to be careful and just assess your options and know that not to scare you. I don't want to scare you off of doing this stuff, but it's a very real possibility. And I just wanted to show you that it doesn't matter how good of an effort you put in or how stellar of a seller or whatever you are on any given platform, uh, they don't care. They do not care. I sold all those items, never had a single bad review, never had a customer reply, uh, complaint. <clears throat> I've only had one return and everyone's been really happy overall in terms of their items. So I, I just really, I, I'm completely baffled as to why it happened and I just wanted to get down here. I guess one, to have a little bit of a vent, but also just to warn you guys that uh, it's a possibility that, that thing could happen as well. So don't put all your eggs in one basket. I'm lucky that I've still got eBay, which can keep things going, keep things trucking along, which is fantastic. But, you know, the second platform was a big thing. And especially here in Australia, I've got no other option now. Unless I want to start selling clothing on Facebook Marketplace, which just isn't going to happen. <clears throat> uh, eBay is my only option. So that's about it. Uh, yeah, a bit of a bland video. Sorry about that. If you've got any questions or anything like that, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram. The link is down in the description. Or you can comment down below, all things like that. All right, we'll leave him there. So basically what I'll, I'll do is I'll put Blake's details in the comment, sorry, in the description field below on this video as well, and also in the comment field section below as well. So by all means, please reach out. Um, I do speak a few times to a lot of the sellers in the UK, um, which also sell on Depop. So by all means, please share as much as you can over in the UK community, by all means in the US community as well, please. Um, <laughs> like I said, I'm gonna say like a broken record, uh, but Blake is probably the top notch, um, one of the top notch resellers in the YouTube space over here really genuinely nice guy um wouldn't hurt a fly so by all means please let's throw our support behind him like i said before realistically i don't care what, what you think about me or grumpy granny uh blake is completely different he is a phenomenal human uh, and he basically would be better off with our support so by all means please 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 send an email to support even you know do whatever you need to do put his user id in there and request that they basically reassess it from a supervised position and get his account back but anyway thank you very much and i'm going to upload this video right now and we'll see you next time bye